Cantos 100 to 102 of Book 2 of the Ramayana of Balmiki, translated by Ralph D. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by O123. Canto 100 The Meeting. Then Varad, the Satrugna showed, the spot and eager onward strode, first bidding Saint Vasista bring the widowed consorts of the king. As by fraternal love impelled, his onward course the hero held. Sumatra followed close behind, Satrugna with an ansious mind. Not Varad's self more fain could be to look on Rama's face than he. As speeding on, the spot he neared, amid the hermit's homes appeared, his brother's cart with leaves overspread, and by its side a lowly shed. Before the shed, great heaps were left, of gathered flowers and billets cleft, and on the trees hung grass and bark, Rama and Lakshman's pad to mark, and heaps of fuel to provide, against the cold stood ready dried. The long-armed chief, as on he went, in glory's light preeminent, with joyous words like these addressed, the brave Satrugna and the rest. This is the place, I little doubt, which Varadwaja pointed out, not far from where we stand must be, the woodless stream Mandakini. Here on the mountain's woody side, roam elephants in tusked pride, and ever with a roar and cry, each other as they meet defy, and see those smoke reds thick and dark, the presence of the flame they mark, which hermits in the forest strive by every art to keep alive. O oh, happy me, my task is done, and I shall look on Rago's son, like some great saint who loves to treat his elders with all reverence meet. Does Varad reach the forest real? Does roam the Chitrakota's hill, then pity on his breast awoke, and to his friends the hero spoke. War, war upon my life and but, the prince of man, the lord of art, has sought the lonely youth to dwell, sequestered in a hermit's cell. Through me, through me these sorrows fall, on him the splendid lord of all. Through me resigning earthly bliss, he hides him in a home like this. Now will I, by the wall the port, fall at the dear feet of my lord, and that fair seat us too, to win his pardon for my heinous sin. As does he sadly mourned and sighed, the son of the seraph spied, a bower of leafy branches made, sacred and lovely in the shade, of fair proportions large and tall, well roofed with boughs of palm and saw, arranged in order deal overhead. Like grass upon the altar spread, two glorious bows were gleaming there, like Indra's in the rainy air. Terror of foemen backed with gold, made for the mightiest hand to hold, and quivered arrows cast a blade, bright gleaming like the day god's rays. Those serpents with their eyes aglow adorned their capital below. Great swords adorned the cottage laid, each in a case of gold brocade. There hung the trusty shields whereon, with purest gold, the bosses shone. The brace to bind the bowman's arm, the glove to shield his hand from harm, a lasso to the cottage lent from many a golden ornament. Safe was the cart from fear of man, as from wild beasts the lion's den. The fire upon the altar burned, that to the north and east was turned. Varad his eager glances bent, and gazed within the cart intent, in deer skin dress with matted hair, Rama his chief was sitting there, with lion shoulders broad and strong, with lotus eyes, arms thick and long. The right is sovereign, who should be, Lord Paramount from sea to sea, high minded, born to lofty fame, like Brahma's self supremely great, with Lakshman by his side and her, fair Sita for his minister. And Varad gazing, overcome, by sorrow for a while was dumb, then yielding to his war he ran to Rama, and with sobs began. He, who a royal seed should feel, with subjects round, to do his will, my elder brother, see him here, 
with sylvan creatures waiting near, the high-souled hero wont to wear the costliest robes exceeding fair. Now banished in a dear skin dress, hair keeps the path of righteousness. How brooks the son of Rago now the matted locks which slowed his brow, around whose princely head were twined sweet blossoms of the rarest kind. The prince, whose marriage grew acquired by rites performed as he desired, would now a store of married gain, bought by his body's toil and pain. Those limbs to which pure sandal lent the freshness of its fragrant scent, exposed to sun and dust and rain, are now defiled with many a stain. And I, the wretched cause, why this falls on the prince whose right is bliss, ah me, that ever I was born to be the people's hate and scorn. Thus Varad cried, of anguish sprung, great drops upon his forehead hung. He fell overpowered, his grief was such, ere he his brother's feet could touch, as on the glorious prince he gazed, in vain his broken voice he raised. Dear Lord, through the tears and sobbing came, the only words his lips could frame, and brave Satrugna wept aloud, as low at Rama's feet he bowed. Then Rama, while his tears ran fast, his arms around his brother's cast, Guha Sumadra came to meet, the princess in their wild retreat. Brihaspati and Sukra bright, their greeting does rejoice to pay, to the dear Lord who brings the night, and the great God who rules the day. Then wept the dwellers of the shade, whose eyes the princess meet to ride, on mighty elephants surveyed, and cast all thought of joy aside. Canto 101 Varad questioned then Rama gazed, and scarcely knew, Varad so worn and changed in heel. He raised him, kissed him on the head, embraced him, and thus kindly said, Where was thy father, brother dear, that thou art come to seek me here? Unmeet, if he be living yet, thy feet within the oud to set. I pray thee, now the cause declare, why thou hast left thy kingdom there, with matted locks and dear skin dress, to roam the distant wilderness. Thus questioned by the prince at length, Kaike's son regained his strength, and hand to hand in reverence laid, to Rama thus his answer made. The great armed monarch, O my lord, has dared to do a thing abroad, left us, and grieving for his son, a home among the gods has won. My mother, Queen Kaike, gave the order to the king her slave, and at the bidding of the dame, he wrought the sin which mars his fame. A thirst for sway, her hopes are crossed. She mourns her son, her husband lost, and through her impious crime will go for punishment to hell below. Now, O oh my Lord, forgive me all. Be gracious to thy lowly trial. Anointed King, accept a day like Indra's self the royal sway. Be gracious, Prince, to Lord and Peer, and widowed Queens who seek thee here. Accept the kingdom thine by right, and so thy faithful friends delight. Let the broad land no longer be, all widowed and forlorn of thee. Let the full moon of autumn reign, triumphant, over the night again. These lords and I, before the bend, O Rama, to our prayer attend. O do not thou disgrace deny, thy brother, pupil, slave am I. Look on this venerable ring advises of our sire the king from age to age so honoured thou shouldst grant their supplication now as weeping thus the hero prayed his head at rama's feet he laid like a mad elephant he sighed and rama gazed and thus replied how brother can a man of what true to his vows of noble birth a man like me cometh a sin the lordship of the land to win no slightest shade of fault I see, O tamer of thy foes in thee. But never shouldst thou in childish thought, the queen thy mother blame in art. O brother wise and sinless, no, the sacred laws would have it so, that from good wife and son require obedience to their lord and sire. And we are all the kings for thus, the virtuous ever reckon us. 
Yea, brother, be it known to thee, His wives and sons and pupils sway. His is the right, if he deem fit, To bid me, throned as monarch, seat, Or any coat of bark expel, And the skin in the oud to dwell. And O oh, remember, best of all, Who acts as claims of duty call, As to a virtuous sire is due, Such honour claims a mother too. So they, whose lives have ever been, By duty led, the king and queen, Said, Rama, seek the forest shade, And I, what could I else obeyed? Thou must the royal power retain, And over the famed Ayutthaya reign, I, dressed in bark, my days will spend, Where Dundas forest wilds extend. So the third spoke, our king, His share to each apportioning. Before his honoured servant's eyes, Then, ere of bliss, he sought the skies, The righteous monarch's honoured will, Whom all revered, must guide thee still. And thou must still enjoy the share, Assigned thee by our father's care. So I, till twice seven years are spent, will roam this wood in banishment, contented with the lot which he, my high-souled sire, has given me. The jaws the monarch gave and deared, to all mankind by all revered, peer of the Lord supreme, far better, richer, far in gain, of every blessing than to reign, over all the walls I deem. Canto 102 Varad's Tidings he spoke, and Varat thus replied, If falls to every claim beside, I never in kingly duties fail, What will my royal life avail? Still, should the custom be observed, From which our line has never swerved, Which to the younger son never gives, The kingdom while the elder lives, Now to Ayutthaya rich and fair, With me, O Ragu's son, repair, And to protect and gladden all, our house, thyself as king its tall. A king the world's opinion deems, a man to me a god he seems, whose life in virtuous thoughts and deeds, the lives of other men exceeds. When I in distant Caicca stayed, and thou hast sought the forest shade, our father died, the saints delight, so constant in each holy rite. Scars with thy wife and Lakshman thou, hadst journeyed forth to give the vow, when mourning for his son forspent, To heavenly rest the monarch went. Then up, O Lord of man, away, His funeral rites of water pay. I answered Rukna, ere we came, Neglected not the sacred claim, But in the spirit world they say, That gift alone is fresh for I, Which best beloved hands have poured, And thou his dearest art, my lord. For thee he longed, for thee he grieved, his every thought on thee was bent, And crushed by war of thee bereaved, He thought of thee as hence he went. End of Cantos 100, 101 and 102